know the truth and so many motherfuckers who don't want that truth and they don't want to face that shit as a reality fam they just think that it's like that for them over there it's like like a car accident or some shit like that everybody think it can't happen that's to them. a reality it's a lot of people you know that saying? think like that because there's a lot of motherfuckers who think that could never happen to me you know what i'm saying i drive semi trucks and i think about that shit, type of shit all the time like it could definitely happen to me fam for real i could easily roll this big motherfucker over and that'd be the end of me for okay. real as a driver or as a person, one or the other, god damn it, but god damn, it can happen. So you saying that you admitting that it's other shit, other factors and shit that causes people to turn out the way that they are. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. But you're not but everything denying. Is still, but everything is still taught, though, because you can put two motherfuckers in the same room. You just like you go to somebody elementary school, if I'm at a, a preschool or something like that, all them kids are going to play with one another until somebody tells them not to play with each other. Just that simple. Motherfuckers not going to, you don't think you're superior than nobody else until somebody tells you that you're more superior than the other person. You know, that's yeah. interesting to think about because it's like, <clears throat> Let that shit burn out, man. Hit that I noticed that as well, kind of. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like, okay, if you see a black kid, like you look at PJ, my, my sister, you look at my nephew, for example, right? Tierra's son, my sister's son. When he get around people, and also uh, with Tia, when they get around people, they real shy. That's what I noticed. So they'll give you that pause while they're looking at you. So if you see them doing that with adults and other people that they don't know, if they seem to do that with a kid of a different complexion, I would doubt that they think about, okay, it's just because you look completely different. Like, I believe they notice the shit, but, you know, the same curiosity they give, you know what I'm saying, older people, grown folks, mm-hmm. when they just stare at them for a second, they give the kid, they interact with the same motherfucker uh, uh, impression or whatnot. Yeah. As far, and not the impression, but, you know, they're giving them that same curious look. Mm-hmm. Like, who are you? You know, I don't really feel comfortable around you. I don't know yeah, you. I don't know you. I ain't, you know what I'm saying, jumping around with all this energy right now. I'm just sitting here looking at you, trying to figure out oh, who the fuck is this like? interesting being. <laughs> yeah, you see how like. Nah. Yeah, like I said, man, it, 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 it'll be a way, man, but I just think that'd be the only way because that's the only thing that that motherfucker understands, fam. The motherfucker understands brute force. Motherfucker understand shooting them and all they goddamn kids in the face. They understand that type of shit. But you know what? Here's some real good news to that. And this also asks what I was saying to why I think I like, you know, what goes on on the internet in certain pockets, though. Everybody, you know, nah. But certain people or whatnot. The crime rate, that's the good news. Regardless of how many people in prison, 2.5 million. Most okay, that's country. bad. And we the freest country of them all. That's for now, sure. but, um, yeah. but 2.5 million <coughs> that's bad, yeah. But it's over 35 plus million African Americans. I remember back in the day it was 44. I don't know what's going on with them numbers, <coughs> but it's about 35 plus million African Americans. So if you take that 1 million and you subtract that from 35 plus, it's not that much on a larger scale, you know what I'm saying? That's positive. But that's just not to ignore the other stuff that goes on also. You know what I'm saying? Because it do appear to me to be true that, like, sometimes a small circle, like in the media, for example, a small circle influences what's going on with everybody. But like a podcast, basically like a set of podcasts on the Internet, you know, people that got their own little radio shows and all of that, yeah, that they platform. don't outnumber the population <clears throat> in general, but they what everybody follow. They got that platform and everybody enjoys it. Like Charlemagne the God, them, uh, the Breakfast Club or something. If they say something about a certain, a certain rapper or something, you got a lot of motherfuckers that's going to be influenced by their word. Right. You know what I'm saying? If they say the shit's trash, a lot of motherfuckers going to be like, it's trash before you even give it a chance to even, you know what I'm saying? Because you got the masses just following you. So I know what you're saying, though. You got some motherfuckers that got that platform, and then you got a lot of motherfuckers who don't got that platform. And then you got a lot of people that do, but they misuse their platform and they don't do nothing like at all positive with it and shit. But like I said, it's, it's good to have that knowledge, and you should always drop that knowledge on motherfuckers. But motherfuckers definitely have to understand that, cause like, like that's people I don't sell coke and shit like that no more, fam. For real, I was I went to this this motherfucker that hit me up and shit, man. And they was like, oh, yeah, uh, my uh, my homegirl, she wants something and shit. You know what I'm saying? Go over there and holler at her and shit. 
And I was like, all right, where she stay at? My phone, like, oh, she stay over there. I go over there. You know what I'm saying? That's a little young girl. You know what I'm saying? She's about her early 20s, kind of thick oh, and shit. This some motherfucker did. Not all of them, but a lot of the motherfuckers have, like, basically, like, how they be having, like, generational wealth and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They'll have somebody that will really be able to have their back. For, for the most part, as black folks, they, we, anybody got nobody that's going to have their fucking back, man, because we're not allowed to do that type of shit. It's not that we're not allowed to do it. It's just that they make it real hard for motherfuckers, man. They'll find a way to take your money, like how they locked up Wesley Snipes, motherfuckers like that. Oh, you really pay your taxes. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? A motherfucker's going to find a way to take that fucking Bill Cosby. You out here yeah, raping sure. bitches. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers will find a way to take your generation of wealth away from you so that you can't pass nothing throughout the ranks and shit. You got some motherfuckers that they're allowed to do that, but that's a motherfucker who go get a white bitch or something like that once you get the NBA money or something. You stay black the whole way through, you're going to end up broke somewhere talking on ESPN and shit because you have to do that shit. Or it's a nigga like Michael Jordan and shit stayed in the cut. He was able to survive through it. But a lot of them motherfuckers, they be fucked up for niggas, man. <clears throat> I'm telling you, dog. That's why I was like, man, I'm trying to get the generational wealth. I don't know how I'm going to get that shit. Just give me a million dollars somewhere, though. Somehow, some way. I ain't got it all the way figured out, but... Man, I'm damn close. You know, I, when I was thinking about that, I feel like I ain't being arrogant. I really feel like I can make $15 million within a 10-year period, at least. Do what? Rapping, nigga? Or no, I think I said... Writing what? rhymes for somebody else? You can do that. You can go oh, that was you talking the whole time? I'm like, some. You can be somebody ghostwriter and, you know what I'm saying, go get Drake paid or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> it ain't only because of the writing, you know, the lyricism. It ain't only because of that. It's because of the blogs I be doing. I be doing, blo- like, it's a book called The Origins of an Islamic State. The book came out, let me see, if, if it was compiled in the 8th century. It's what, 2019? Mm-hmm. That's about over 1,200 years. So that's the 8th century, nigga. That shit's so fucking... The book is thick because there's a lot yeah, of pages. Not like the Bible. But I get it off a website, a complete verbatim copy of that shit, right? Mm-hmm. I went through half the book. The book is like, again, over 1,200 years old. Each chapter I broke down and I did audio... All right, you guys. Lorraine, Johnson. All right. See y'all later. All right. Drive safely. Uh, yeah, each chapter I did like an audio vlog about it. And the shit is on point. I know for sure because I'm a real good fact checker. What up? Oh, yeah, you missed it and shit. What up, Jay? You missed the little blind and shit. Hell yeah. This is content, Radiance. I seen you looking at the phone. I ain't getting up that much shit because I ain't got no job, but I just got another job, though. That's okay. Because it was bullshit after I don't want to shit. So yeah, yeah it's gonna be gone for a month. like a month, but uh, I told him to have Tess call me and shit because uh, I'll get paid like in the next couple of weeks. And then I'll be able to send her a couple of dollars and you can get him some school some shit that they only sell. But I want to be able to get him some shit while he's out there yeah, too because he's in Arizona. Like you know what I'm saying? Week. Yeah, that's what's up. Ladies, can I buy a cigarette <laughs> off you? Okay. Yeah, I got one, nigga. I buy two of them off you. Oh, yeah, one of these. I got two. You got two cigarettes, I'll give you a dollar for them. Wait, let me go get my shit. Yeah, I got one oh. for you. Shit. Yeah, buddy. Hell yeah, man. Like I said, man, niggas can come out there, man. But yeah, you make money with blogs and shit, though? How I you got know? the lighter. Uh, how does that money? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. My friends do donations and no, shit. No, no, this is what blog. I'm saying. No, no. <laughs> Nah, cause I be looking at motherfuckers' blogs and motherfuckers be dropping donations. I don't drop donations on the blogs, though. I be seeing, like, niggas be doing live streams, like, certain shit I be looking at. On Instagram. And, uh, they I don't be on Instagram. I be on the YouTube. Uh, cash things. apps and all that. Yeah. Only fans, some females that be kind of, like, semi-prostituting online and shit. <laughs> yeah. You got all that going on. Nah, I ain't making bank off it. Off of it. I'm saying, like, if I get some type of business push, like, I get a certain amount of money or something, or somebody that got notoriety or they foot through the door somewhat, or at least, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? All they got to do is just help me out. I guarantee you I could fucking have all kind of demographics, populations, different types of people liking my shit because I know how to make it 
interesting, but it's all factual. But then you got the music aspect of it too, because I ain't gonna lie. If I had an opportunity in that, I'd take it as well. Shit, yeah. I still know how to write. I practice here and there. I know how to freestyle. I do all that. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Shit. So, and then certain stuff I kind of comment on, not trying to be a podcast. Well, I wouldn't mind. But certain things, I, you know, I, like female boxer, for instance. You know, I, like I mentioned like three or four females, Clarissa Shields. Uh, French on Cruz, I don't know if I mentioned her. I know I mentioned Latondria Jones. Uh, oh, girl, did I like that? I think it's fine. Hannah Gabriel from Costa Rica. Uh, Cecilia Brackis. <clears throat> Maybe not Cecilia Brackis. It's a Nigerian female that she fought. Alexandria Castillo, that's her name. But Clarissa Shields is like the most popular one so far. Yeah. Hannah Gabriel, the chick from um, South America, she like she one of the popular ones as well. And those two had a fight recently that was a classic in female boxing, and it generated, you know, it broke some type of record as far as the fem- like views for female boxing, especially in this time. And old girl Hannah Gabriel, matter of fact, no, nah, I ain't got to end of that out here. Old girl, uh, Hannah, she like one of the first, actually she is the first popular female boxer from Costa Rica. So a lot of people from that country proud as fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So she's an icon to a lot of them. Latondria Jones, for example, she under the, uh, the money team. Uh, damn, uh, the team. Yeah. Yeah. But she was complaining recently, like last year, late last year, talking about she can't get a fight because they're not promoted. They're not doing something to where they're helping her get a fight. They and she felt like jobs. Sure. And she felt like she was sitting on the bench. But I didn't know she had a shorty though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the same time. But she was complaining about that. She was like, I want to be in a spotlight too. Her record is five zero. Five five zero. She had to get some more fights in for belt dance. She ain't number five and oh. I get to about 15, Professional. 15, 20 and oh, or something like that before my fucking really get to really hearing about you real, real good like that. You know what's crazy? I forget another lady. Her name is uh, Hammer, Christina Hammer. She's the person that had the most recent fight with Clarissa. And Clarissa whooped up. You know, basically dominated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was doing all right, but Clarissa was so aggressive. Like, she wasn't passive. You know, she wasn't doing all that dancing around. She was really just going straight out of boxing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, damn. I f- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old girl got, like, 20-plus wins. Clarissa, Clarissa Shields, even though she, like, one of the most, most popular boxers, she only got nine on the professional level. She only yeah. got nine wins. But before that, she got a whole bunch of amateur fights, and she won the Olympic gold medal twice consecutively in oh, a yeah, row. She box, yeah. And she I'm proud of gold that. Gold medals, on the real. You want a gold medal? You can fucking fight. You be whooping the best motherfuckers from other countries, and other countries take shit like that seriously. The pride and shit like that. She from Detroit. Yeah. You want to know something crazy? Now this is funny. This is the first time I ever spoke on this. Now, you already know me. You know, I'm just Johnny, you know what I'm saying? You know, my own little wave. I do me the way I do me. Don't really judge, you know what I'm saying? But she had said something that I was shocked by. Now, she's from Flint, Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. She was saying, yeah, the proper peas, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I know what that come from, that mm-hmm. saying. I'm aware of it. So I'm like, damn, okay, she from Flint, Michigan, you know, she from a poor environment, and they show, like, a little biography of her on YouTube. You see her family, where they lived at, all that. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's probably, like, one of those gangs that grew up in our neighborhood. But that was something that she took and applied that practically, you know what I'm saying? So it could work for her mm-hmm. boxing career, keep her mental strong and going. So I asked her a question one time on live on Instagram. <coughs> And I asked her that. And you got to see the facial expression. She looked at my question. 
I think she read it, but she, yeah, she read it, and then she looked looked up to the right or the left, but paused for a second and then just looked back at the camera, and then just continued. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I, I hit it with another comment. I was like, don't worry, I I keep that. Be I said some shit, some something basically like, don't worry about it. Like if it's true, like you know how you talk in between the lines. I basically let her know like. If it's true when I'm throwing out there and you catching it, don't worry, I won't speak on it again. But I know what I think is correct. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Like basically you somehow had some affiliation with that. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's bad, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Hey, you took something flat that on on a professional level. I think that's a fucking interesting fact though. It might seem like it's small, but that shit is interesting. You know, it's like a real life addict. You know, like that's something that, you know, everyday people like us, we know about or somehow was around. You know what I'm saying? During our lifetime. She was around that, but she's now a public figure and a celebrity in a sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you got that realness aspect. If you catch it based on that saying, proper uh, preparation prevents poor or some shit. You know what I mean? If what I'm saying with what I'm thinking about her taking it or that being influencing to the fact that she incorporated that, man, that's the real aspect that you can't separate. So, you know, okay, like Mark Lamont Hill, he's another, like, contributor. You know, he'd be talking on CNN. He'd been on Fox News. He'd been on MS <laughs> He'd been on MSNBC. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But if you look at his arm... He got a tattoo of this dude named Malachi York. That was fucking right. You know what I'm saying? That's like Obama saying he used to go to the mosque of the Nation of Islam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that's yeah, it's still recording. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's like saying Obama used to go to the mosque of the Nation of Islam. It's so exotic. But if it's true. Even if you don't follow that guy at all, it's like, you know, it's like an underground population of people that know about him, a lot of them, and they got respect for him. Some people follow him. The fact that you got a public figure on a commercial scale that be on shows giving his opinion on various subjects, and I can say at least from his arguments, is very black. The fact that he has a tattoo, like, because uh, he's a, a professor, that's what I forgot to mention. He has a PhD. You know Michael Eric Dyson? Yeah, I Michael, heard him. Michael Eric Dyson paid for his education and all that. So, you know, and he claimed he used to be homeless before all of this. But you look at him, he do look like a regular black dude that you'll see on the street. But, you know what I'm saying, he's sharp. And, again, that tattoo, he was on a breakfast club, and he showed Charlemagne. He started breaking it down. He was like, yeah, the great Malachi, Malachi, Malachi Z. York. If you follow him or you ever, like, hear his name, pay attention to him, and you'll see why that is so fucking baffling. You know what I mean? But just like with Clarissa Shields and that whole little saying, that's, connect, that's connected to that in the sense of being aligned with the real side of everyday people. Mm -hmm. That's like a connection and shit. You know what I mean? Especially if he used to follow a guy like that, he got to have a lot of reverence for him to mm -hmm. have him tattooed have on tattooed his shoulder. On Hell yeah. That. It's incredible. Here go, here go another one. It's for the rock your mind. Barack Obama. President Barack Obama, the former president of the United States of America, the first black guy with deep-rooted black genetics and white as well, mixed together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you can see it manifested in his children from his wife, Michelle Obama, as well. In his book, and... I believe it was the audacity of hope because I read the first one too. dreams from my father, whichever one that where he went, where he went into detail about about his uh, college experiences. And he was naming all the different black writers he knew about. And he said the person that stood out to him was Malcolm X. The person that made the most sense to him was Malcolm X. And he applauded what he stood for in his plan. And he said, uh, the whole thing about the blue-eyed devils. This came from his book, his words. The whole thing about the blue-eyed devil from Malcolm X. 
to Barack Obama in his own personal opinion was incidental, which means it really didn't matter because it was so small when you look at the whole picture of the man and his evolution. You know what I mean? Before he got up until the point where he died. Powerful. Now, again, Malcolm X, Nation of Islam, Malachi York, that saying from Clarissa Shields, all of those are levels of realness and connection to everyday people. That's why I think those facts is interesting because it's real shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's some good shit, though. Barack Obama had some radical shit that he wrote yeah. about, man. Like his thing, what well, he you said. Don't believe anything yeah. ex goddamn had to say. Dude. That motherfucker definitely, <laughs> he, he definitely had his his motherfucking mind in the right place. But it's just hard to, make, to really express yourself as the. That's why, I, like, I was watching something that somebody was saying, like, the nigga had it worse than that than anybody. Like, as like the black first black president, because there was certain shit that he couldn't do because. You know, you wait, 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 hold on, wait, let me do something real quick, let me pause and then press record again just to make sure this first audio don't get